Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are going to do another dinosaur hybrid. So I've been trying to figure out what I wanted to combine with a cardo and I figured a horned owl would be very interesting. Lately I've been wanting to combine them with birds. I figured it just meshes well together. And this one is going to be a little tricky. I'm not quite sure how to do it. I just figured like a horned owl and a carno would go well because Carnos have horns and horned owl. I, I don't know. I, I don't know why I do these things. <laughs> Anyways, let's get sketching because I need to figure out how I'm actually going to do this. Now with combining the carno and the owl, I figured the body wouldn't be too hard. I would just kind of go for more of a chubby, fluffy carno body, but the face, I was kind of struggling, so I thought I'd sketch something out to try and figure out how I want to go about doing it. Now at first, I thought I'd go more carno in style, so I tried sketching out a carno and adding more owl features to the face, but it started looking really weird and I just didn't like how it was coming out, so I decided to switch it up and go with a owl face and add carno features to that. That way I could go more creepy cute with the piece. So after messing around with it a little bit, trying to figure out how I could do the markings and stuff on the face, I think I really like this and we're going to move forward with making the clay head. Okay, so I'm going to get a basic shape laid out first. So I have a lump of tin foil. I'm going to get this completely covered in clay and I'm going to try and get as similar to the shape that I drew as possible. Um, as I'm working on this, I'm going to start adding clay for the horns and adding a little bit more to the front to elongate the face to make that beak. Once I have a basic shape laid out, I'm going to start adding my features. So I'm going to start marking out and adjusting the shape of the beak a little bit, and then I'm going to take some resin pieces and I'm going to mark out where we're going to add the eyes. So for this piece, I'm going to be using some resin eyes because I don't currently have glass eyes large enough to do what I want to do. So these ones are temporary, we're going to replace them with the ones that I'm going to make later. Once I'm happy with the placement of the eyes, I'm going to move on to working on the mouth. So I need to figure out where the opening is going to be. I'm going to sketch that out roughly with one of my tools. And then once I like how that looks, I can clean it up and then we can start adding teeth to the mouth. So I'm just going to take a little bit of clay here and there, tiny little balls, I'm going to roll them out into some cones and we're going to place them where we want our teeth. So I'm thinking three teeth on each side would look really nice, so I'm going to get those placed and then I'm going to use my tools to kind of clean up the edges and blend them into the rest of the face. I'm then going to add some nostril holes and then I'm going to work on the texture. Now most of the face is going to get furred, so I'm mainly going to be adding texture in detail to the beak and mouth and then around the horns and stuff I need to add a texture to those as well. So I'm just going to kind of use my tools and figure out how I want everything to look texturally and then once I'm happy with the face we can put it in the oven for probably about 45 to 55 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. Now while that's baking, I'm going to start working on the eyes that we're going to switch out with. So I have some resin pieces, a color that I really like for the eyes, but there's no pupil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my tools and I'm actually going to like drill into the middle of the eye on the back side to kind of make a like empty space. And the color that my resin is is kind of opaque. 
So once I get far enough into the eye, I can just fill this or paint the inside of this with black paint and you can actually see that it makes a nice pupil with a bit of a fade. Now I'm really happy that this actually worked out because I wasn't 100% sure and I really didn't want to have to paint the pupil on. I wanted it to look more inside of the eye instead of sitting on top of the eye. And now that our clay head is out of the oven and is cool to touch, we can start working on switching out the eyes. So I'm going to glue these in place real quick and then we can start building up our clay around the eyes to make the eyelids. Now you'll notice that I did like lose a tooth in the process of taking it out of the oven. I just kind of bumped it and it fell right off. So we're going to fix that too and we're going to reinforce the backing of all of the other teeth as well. That way we don't lose another tooth. So we're just going to fix that while we're working on adding the eyelids. Now that we have our clay head done, we can start working on our clay feet. So for the feet, I have a wire frame set up for both of them, and what we're going to do first is we're going to add our claws. So for the claws, I'm going to be using my epoxy clay because it's just a little bit more uh, sturdy and claws tend to be kind of thin and pokey and just easier to break in general, so I like making them with stronger clay. So I'm going to add those to the wire frame. Those are going to have to cure, and then once they're done curing, we can switch over to our other clay and start adding clay to the rest of the wire frame, covering it up and getting the basic shape of our foot laid out. For this, I usually add a good chunk of clay to the very middle of the foot, and then I start taking strips of clay to start covering up the wires for each toe. I'll just kind of lay them out and then kind of wrap them around the wire and blend everything together. Now when covering up the wire frames for my clay feet, I like to work on the bottoms of the feet first. Sometimes I'll even do a pre-bake to save that progress and then I'll work on the tops and going up the rest of the leg. It just kind of, it works better for me. I don't know why, I just feel like I don't mess up or stick my thumb in some part of the clay that I need to fix. And then I'm actually going to be furring some of the foot as well. I thought I'd do kind of like a fluffy owl foot, so I'm not going to add a ton of detail going up the leg, but I do want to add texture. So I have this one fabric mesh, and I'm just going to stretch it over the clay and kind of push it in to add a bit of a scaling texture. And then I'll add a little bit more detail to the tops of the toes to make it look like there's larger scales. So I'm going to bake our feet real quick at the same temp and time as the head, 275 Fahrenheit for about 45 to 55 minutes. And then once everything is out of the oven and it's cooled, we can start painting it. Now for this piece, the main colors that we're going to be using are going to be a bunch of different browns and some grays. So I'm going to primer all of our clay pieces first, kind of a lighter brown. That way we have something similar to what we're working with to start off with, and then we can add our colors on top of this. So I'm going to do this to the feet and the face, and then we're going to start working on the face first. Now for our Al Carno hybrid, what we're going to do is we're going to have the top of the body more of a gray color. So I'm going to be doing that with the face. I'm going to have to paint that part gray. So I'm going to mark out and completely cover up where I want that gray to be on the face. And then we can start adding our shadows. Now 
Now for the shadows, I want to add a lot framing the eyes because I want them to be kind of just encircled with darkness. It'll make them kind of glow a bit more. And then I also want to add the shadows to the nostrils and then a little bit framing where the beak is. So I'm going to water down my black paint and add this. I'll try and blend it here and there, but I'll probably also wipe a lot of it away as well. After that, I thought I'd add a little bit of a brown highlight to the gray section, just a tiny bit. I don't want to overwhelm it because I still want it to be a nice gray, but I figured that would kind of like blend everything together a bit more. And then I figured a good way to make that beak stand out a little bit more would be to kind of darken underneath it. So I'm going to paint the bottom half of the face more of a black color. We're going to be furring this and stuff, but I want to kind of just do it for now. We'll probably add actually white fur here. You know, the more I'm working on this face, I feel like I'm just adding more and more gray to it. So I'm going to be doing the beak gray as well, and then we're going to add a few shadows to it and highlights. And again, like I said, we're going to be furring this face, and one thing I want to do to help the fur kind of blend better into the face is I want to add a bit of that fur color paint-wise to the face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my white paint, and I'm going to kind of add some speckling here and there and this will kind of help blend the white fur fabric that I want to add into the face a little bit more. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with how the face looks. I'm going to move on to working on the feet. So we're going to be doing these a little bit different than how I did the face. First off, we're going to add our shadows. So I'm going to water down my black paint and pretty much just go over the entire foot and then wipe away the excess paint. That way um, the black is mainly in all the little divots and stuff from the texture that we added to the clay. Now what I think I want to do with these feet is I want to have the bottoms, the underside of the feet, a bit darker, and then I want the tops of the toes to be more on the brown side. So I'm going to try and add more of a darker color and a brown color and blend them together where they meet. And then we can add some highlights and mess around with that. And then I think I also want to have some larger scales on the tops of the toes. I really wasn't sure about this, so I didn't sculpt them in. So what we're going to do is we're going to just paint them on. So I'm going to use a gray for this because I figured it'd stand out against the brown. And I'm going to paint on a few scales on the tops of the toes. I'm going to use a little bit of my black paint to kind of go around the scales and this should help kind of bring them out a little bit more because they're kind of blending in a little bit too much with the brown. So adding that, kind of blending it into the brown a little bit so there's not just a harsh line framing the scale. Lastly, I just need to paint our claws and then add a little bit of a highlight to them. Now with our last art doll that we did, the saber tooth, I ended up furring the face before adding it to the body and everything, and it worked out just so much better, it was easier to handle and everything, so I am going to be doing that from now on. So I'm going to do that with the feet and the face real quick, and then we can start working on sewing and the body. So for the feet, I've got it pretty simple. We're not going to really do much fur trimmings. I just have a section of fur fabric cut out to fit the front of the foot, and I'm just going to glue this in place. But with the face, we're going to have a lot more to do, and we have a lot of different fur colors that we're going to use. So I'm going to work on the top of the head first. I'm going to take my gray fabric that I want to add. I've got a cut piece and I'm going to glue that in place. And then I'm going to kind of blend it into the clay a little bit more by taking cut pieces of the fur fabric. And I'm also going to switch over to a white as I get closer and closer to the beak.
And then I'm going to be doing basically the same thing to the underside of the head, but I'm going to be using my white for a fabric. So I've got that piece of fabric cut to fit, gluing it in place, and then I'm going to blend it in with my fur trimmings. And for the sides of the face, I'm going to be using more of a khaki kind of brown color of fur and a white. So I'm going to get the entire face furred up. I'm going to have to let the glue dry completely and then I can add some extra detail with paint. So I'm going to add some markings here and there and I'm also going to try and blend the fur a little bit better into the clay portion that we did not cover in fur. And then moving on to the sewing for the body, I've got my pattern all figured out and we're going to have a bunch of different colors for fabric for this. So you can see the basic shape that I have. I kept the wings really tiny to look like carno arms and then the body is going to be a lot chubbier and stuff to be more owl shaped. So for the sides of the body, I have these broken up into three different colors of fur fabric and I need to sew all of these together first for each side. Once we have the sides together, we can attach it to the belly piece. So I've got my belly piece here and we're going to connect a side piece to each side of the belly piece. For the legs, the outer section, I want to have the same coloring, so I have to break up that fabric as well. So we've got the gray, the brown, and the white, and we're going to sew all of those together. Then we can take these and the inside portions of the legs, which I'm just going to leave white, and we can sew down the fronts connecting those together. And then for our really tiny little wings, what we're going to do is we're going to have some felt pieces for the feathers and then the body of the wing is going to be our fur fabric. So I'm going to glue the fur fabric to each side of our felt feathers and then we can sew down the top portion of it to close them up. I'm going to take one of my hair trimmers to clean up the fur for the wings just a little bit because the fur is just too large to even see our feathers. So I'm going to trim those up really good. We can probably do a little bit more shaving once we have the doll assembled. Okay, so now we need to add the wings to the fabric for the body. So I'm going to mark out where I'm going to connect those on the body. I'm going to cut some little holes for them and then we can sew them in place. I'm going to sew around them because I want to have it open to where we can put a wire in them. Otherwise, if we weren't wiring them, I could just kind of completely close them off. Okay, so I think we're ready to put our doll together. I made a wire frame ahead of time. I was debating on not having the wings posable because of how tiny they are, but I decided to make them posable. Why not? Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our wire frame and we're going to run the fabric for the body over the wire frame. So I've cut some holes for where the legs are going to go and then the wires for the wings are just going to slide right into those. And then we're going to take our clay head and we're going to glue it to the wire for the neck. And so I'm just going to add some hot glue to the back of the head. I've got a hole for the wire to go into and I'm just going to glue that in place. And then I'm going to take the fabric for the neck and I'm going to glue it around the base of the head. So I'll start kind of where the chin or bottom section of the neck is and then I'll just go all the way around until I meet at the very top with the two ends of the fabric. 
you want to let this dry a little bit and then we can start stuffing and closing up the body. Now we need to work on our legs. So I'm gonna start with the fabric for the legs and figuring out where we need to sew them onto the body. You mainly just need to worry about making sure that they're evenly placed on both sides of the body and that the wire for the leg will actually be inside of the fabric that you sew in place. So you wanna kinda of sew around that. After that, we're gonna add our clay feet to the ends of the wire. So I'm gonna make sure that I have the wires adjusted correctly and then we can wrap the clay pieces onto the ends of the wire frame. So we're gonna get that in place and then we can take the fabric and glue it around the bases of the feet and stuff and close up our legs. Now I want to adjust the shape of the body just a tiny bit, so I'm going to use my needle and thread and kind of add a few stitches here and there uh, to kind of like tighten around the neck to have it look a little bit more rounded for the head, and then just kind of adjusting the back end in the belly section. Okay, so the last little bit of detail that I want to work on is blending our fabrics together. So where the white fabric meets our spotted fabric, for one, the spotted fabric is a little too long, so I'm going to trim it up so it looks like it's the same length, and then I want to blend the markings a little bit. So we're going to be painting on the white fur fabric to add some of those markings onto it. And that way we don't have just this striking line breaking up and stopping our markings. It looks a little bit more natural. Okay guys, and here is our Carno hybrid creature. I had a lot of fun with this one. It was definitely a challenge because again, I went into this project having no idea how to combine these two creatures and I think he came out pretty interesting. <laughs> I do really like his eyes on his tiny little wings. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna have him up for sale on my website. So if anyone wants to buy him and give him a new home, you can check the links out for that. Now while you're down there, you'll find a bunch of other links to different art supplies and stuff that I like to use to make my art dolls. So if you're interested in trying something out, you can check that out. Now if you do buy anything through these links, they do help support the channel because they are affiliated links, so just letting you know that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe to all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!